All right, it's Saturday. Again, every Saturday we have our Bible study on live streaming, and I want to show you something important. Everybody knows now probably that Billy Graham died. You know that Billy Graham died, right? So what I want to do today is I want to talk about some of the very important topics surrounding Billy Graham's life. Just It's very, very important. You have to understand this. And I want to go ahead and say right off the bat that uh, if you're hearing this for the first time, if you're finding this out about Billy Graham and his ministry for the first time, please don't think that I'm being rude or mean uh, or cruel to anybody. Um, I, I have feelings for you. A lot of people are being shocked that come to this knowledge and come to this information. It's very important. It's a, it's a three minute video. I want to show you a three minute video and I want you to watch it and listen very carefully. This is a test for you. What I'm about to show you is a test for you. It's a test to whether or not you love the truth or know the truth. And then we're going to greet some people here. And then we're going to get into our Bible study on this topic, the uh, strong delusion that's coming into the world. But right now, I want you to listen to this very, very carefully. And then we're going to greet people because we're in our live stream right now. You can see people coming in and saying hi. Hey, hello, everybody. I want to show you a three minute video. Please watch this and let me know what you hear. It's very powerful about Billy Graham. All right, listen very carefully. And I don't want to fool anybody here. I don't want to mislead anybody. And I don't want to fool anybody here. I don't want to mislead anybody. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? Well, Christianity and being a true believer you know, I think there's the, the, the body of Christ, which comes from all the Christian groups around the world, or outside the Christian groups, outside the Christian groups. I think everybody, everybody, everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, whether they're conscious of it or not, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. They're members of the body of Christ. Hold on a second. There's more coming. I just want to tell you, did you hear what he said? He said, you can be a part of the body of Christ whether you are conscious of it or not. That means you don't have to make a free will choice to deliberately confess him as your God and Savior. You're still part of the body of Christ whether you're aware of it or not. Everyone is getting saved. That's what he's saying. Check out the rest of this. I think James answered that, the Apostle James, in the first council in Jerusalem, when he said that God's purpose for this age is to call out a people for his name. Mm -hmm. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world, non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ. They are members of the body of Christ. They are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus. They may not even know the name of Jesus. They may not even know the what? name of Jesus. What? But uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have. And they turn to the only light that they have. And I think that they are saved. And I think that they are saved and I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven and that they're going to be with us in heaven. There is no doubt that God is calling all mankind around the world, every nationality, tongue, race, to come to his son Jesus. He's pouring out his spirit on all men, but they will know his name. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And the book of Romans tells us that if we confess and believe, we shall be saved. We must know the name of Jesus and believe and follow the name of Jesus in order to be saved. This man is teaching terrible, heretical, damnable heresies. This is the wide gate teaching. I'll prove it to you by their own statements. Check this out. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction and many will go therein. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There's a wideness in God's mercy. There is. There's a wideness. There's a wideness. There's a wideness in God's mercy. There is. That is the wide gate teaching. That is the wide gate teaching. Beware of false prophets.
And I don't want to fool anybody here. I don't want to mislead anybody. And I don't want to fool anybody here. I don't want to mislead anybody. All right. That part is over. I'm going to play that again a little bit later as more people come in. Some of you got here a little late. Please go back and watch that video. If you want to watch it on my YouTube channel, it's called, what is it called? Test, test yourself. Do you hear deception? Test yourself. Do you hear deception in this man? That's what the video is called. I'll play it again later. Test yourself. Do you hear deception in this man? Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk today about the strong delusion, global deception. Are you really in the truth or not, which we always talk about, but it's, this is a great opportunity with the passing of Billy Graham to remind us of what the gospel is or what the truth is. And we're going to get into that here in a little bit. At, by, and, at, uh, well, just, just in a few minutes, we're going to get into this. So right now I want to say hi to everybody. So bear with me if you're watching this pre-recorded upload. Uh, we're live streaming right now. So what's up, Miles, Tina, Vanessa, hey, Yesenia. Santos, obedience is love. Elizabeth is in the house. Got Noelia, Jedi, Jedi. I know I'm, ah, I don't know why I'm getting that name. Is that Alex? I don't remember who you are. I'm trying to remember, buddy. Uh, Miles Powers, uh, Nasveen, Ev and Tina and Noelia and every, okay. I think I, Kimmy's here. Leslie, welcome. Suicidal depression. You don't want that name, buddy. Don't go around calling yourself that <laughs> unless you got a real ministry for, for that. Uh, you want to you cast those thoughts out of your head, brother. All right. Cast them out. Don't put them on your neck. Don't wear it around your shirt. All right, brother. Nancy's in the house. Balance here. What's up, guys? Yesenia, Janice, and others. Warrior of faith. That's right. I, I'm going to have to keep remembering that. The sheep man. Sister Erica's in the house. What's up? What's up, Sister Erica? All right. So we're going to get started here in just a minute. I just showed a, a little clip of Billy Graham saying that you did not need to know the name of Jesus in order to go to heaven. You do not need to know the name of Jesus in order to go to heaven. And um, this is the common denominator of the ecumenical movement. This is the overtone of the new religion, denying and de belittling Jesus and elevating this universal God, acceptance, tolerance, and forsaking the fundamental teachings of Jesus. Repent or perish. Repent or perish. And you must call upon the name of the Son of God. Now, this is the, this is the reason why I got kicked out of my uh, other church. The church that I grew up in, the Baptist church that I grew up in, they're falling into this deception. And I tried to warn them and I tried to show them and the pastor was listening to me, but then he died and his son took over and his son kicked me out. His son didn't want to hear it. And, but his dad was listening. His dad was listening. Uh, too bad he passed away. I, I think when, when he passed away, that church is beginning to die. That, I had to leave. A lot of people left. Uh, because they would not, they would not listen to the admonitions and warnings about this kind of teaching, about the universalism teaching of Billy Graham, about the universal tolerance, interfaith teachings of the Catholic church of the Pope. And I know many of you are finding out the hard way, TD Jakes, Creflo Dollar, and others on these big Christian networks are all teaching the same thing. I heard, I heard these guys belittle the name of Jesus. I heard them over time. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you love your faith, if you love these men more than the truth, or if you don't know the truth, I feel sorry for you. A lot of people are denying Jesus, denying his name, denying his teachings, and they think they're Christians. They think they're Christians. They think they're going to be saved. And it, this, this with Billy Graham, this just goes to show you, if you're getting here late, I'm sorry, you can just go back and watch the video or go to my YouTube channel and type in test yourself and watch that video called test yourself and see if you can hear what Billy Graham is saying. Billy Graham is a perfect example of someone who has 
known about Jesus and then denied Jesus. They known about Jesus their whole lives. They've tasted the goodness of his spirit and then they've fallen away. And many people are doing that. And, and that's one of my fears is that I, I don't want to fall away from God. And so uh, we're going to find that scripture for you right here. I think it's 2 Peter 2 maybe. Here it is, 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's look at this scripture right here. This is a perfect example of people like Billy Graham. And again, if you're learning this for the first time, I know in our group, our small group on Facebook, people were shocked to hear this. This has been going, we've been exposing this for years. A lot of people know this already. A lot of people know this, but like my old church, a lot of people ignore it. They don't want to believe that, that Billy Graham fell away from the faith. They don't want to believe it. So here's what it says. But they are false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Look at this. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring themselves swift destruction. Privily is secretly bringing it in. There's nothing more clever than to have an implant in the church, an evangelical, strong, Bible-believing, camp crusader, tent revival preacher like Billy Graham over the years, over the decades, who did good work in the beginning, who really led a lot of people to Jesus with a strong gospel message in the beginning to privily bring in damnable heresies over the generations, over the decades, whereby the end conclusion is he's denying Jesus. Denying Jesus. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said, brothers and sisters? He denied that you even need to know the name of Jesus. He denied, Billy Graham denied that you even need to know the name of Jesus. Let's watch it again. Let's watch it again. It's a very short video. Beware of false prophets. You shall know them by their fruits. Listen carefully to what this man is saying, brothers and sisters. And I don't want to fool anybody here. I don't want to mislead anybody. And I don't want to fool anybody here. I don't want to mislead anybody. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? Well, Christianity and being a true believer, you know, I think there's the, the, the body of Christ, which comes from all the Christian groups around the world or outside the Christian groups. But, you know... Okay, first he's saying he's describing the body of Christ. Give me a seven if you're listening to me out there. Anybody listening out there? Got 39 people in the room. I'll see if there's at least two or three people that's listening. I want you to spread this around. I want you to be aware of it. I want you to, to warn others about it. Okay, now he's getting ready to answer that question. What do you think is the future of Christianity? Billy Graham's about to answer that question. And he's going to describe what Christianity is. Now listen very carefully. He starts off by describing the body of Christ. Are you in the body of Christ? Who's in the body of Christ and who's not in the body of Christ? Listen to Billy Graham. Well, I think there's the, the, the body of Christ, which comes from all the Christian groups around the world or outside the Christian groups. Outside the Christian groups, he's saying that the body of Christ is made up of all the Christian groups and those outside the Christian groups. Listen to him. Outside the Christian groups, I think everybody, everybody, everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, whether they're conscious of it or not, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. All right, you heard that? He says, you don't even have to know Jesus personally, consciously, to be a part of the body of Christ. You're a part of the body of Christ, whether you are conscious of it or not. Is that true? Is that true? Is that true, brothers and sisters? Is it true that you can be a part of the body of Christ and not know that you're a part of the body of Christ? Because that's what Billy Graham is saying right here. It's Christ. Or knows Christ outside the Christian groups, outside the Christian groups, outside the Christian groups. I think everybody, everybody, everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, whether they're conscious of it or not, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. They're members of the body of Christ. Hold on a second. There's more coming. I just want to tell you, did you hear what he said? 
He said, you can be a part of the body of Christ whether you are conscious of it or not. That means you don't have to make a free will choice to deliberately confess him as your God and Savior. You're still part of the body of Christ whether you're aware of it or not. Everyone is getting saved. That's what he's saying. Check out the rest of this. I think James answered that, the Apostle James, in the first council in Jerusalem when he said that God's purpose for this age is to call out a people for his name. Mm -hmm. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world, non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ. They are members of the body of Christ. They are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus. They may not even know God. They may not even know the name of Jesus. I actually had people in that church that kicked me out tell me that this is true. That, that What about the people that don't know the name of Jesus? What about the people that don't know the name of Jesus? Do you mean to tell me that God is going to send them to hell? They, don't, they, they, they never heard of Jesus? Do you mean to tell me they're going to go to hell? Yes, I'm telling you that. They may not even know the name of Jesus. They may not even know the name of Jesus. They may not even know the name of Jesus. But uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have and they turn to the only light that they have and I think that they are saved and I think that they are saved and I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven and that they're going to be with us in heaven. There is no doubt that God is calling all mankind around the world, every nationality, tongue, race, to come to his son Jesus. He's pouring out his spirit on all men, but they will know his name. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And the book of Romans tells us that if we confess and believe, we shall be saved. We must know the name of Jesus and believe and follow the name of Jesus in order to be saved. This man is teaching terrible, heretical, damnable heresies. This is the wide gate teaching. I'll prove it to you by their own statements. Check this out. Wide is the way to destruction. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is. There is a wideness. There is a wideness. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is. That is the wide gate teaching. What does the Bible say about that? We know what the Bible says about that. Jesus says, enter in the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many will go down that path. And then it says right here, just after that, beware of false prophets. Be, isn't that interesting how he's, he is, if, if this doesn't describe Billy Graham, nothing does. First, he's talking about a wide gate entrance here, and then he says, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, brothers and sisters. This is a perfect, perfect example of what the Bible, Jesus himself, is warning about. What he's warning about. And so we know that there is a strong delusion coming into the world. And it is going to be for people who do not love the truth. How many of you heard me talk about this before? How many of you understand what this strong delusion is? Give me a seven if you're out there listening. Anybody conscious out there? We're going to, I just want to point you back to this again. We're going to talk about very, very, very plainly what the gospel is, who Jesus is, and make sure that you never, 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 never let that slip through your fingers like sand. Never let that slip through your fingers. Jesus is warning us that there's going to be people that come along that you're going to love. He says, if you love men more than me, that you're not worthy of me. And people love Billy Graham so much that they're not, they're not willing to listen carefully to what he's been teaching. And they're believing what he's teaching. And they're falling away from the truth. That's because they love men more than truth. Do you love men more than truth? Do you love your favorite pastor more than truth? Would you be able to identify whether or not he starts teaching something uh, that's crooked? Do you know the truth? First of all, do you know the truth? Do you know what the truth is? Because if you don't know what the truth is, how can you tell if somebody's teaching differently? Can I get an amen? 
Can I get an amen? If you don't know the truth, how can you tell if someone's starting to teach sideways or twisted from the truth? How can you tell? How can you tell if you don't know what the truth is? How could you tell? And that's very important that we know the truth, that we follow the truth, and we have the spirit of truth. We have to know the difference between which Jesus we're going to listen to. We have to know the difference of what he taught. What did Jesus teach? What did he say? Who was he? Who was he? Did Jesus claim to be God on earth? Was he just uh, the son of God separate? Or was he just a man? Or was he just a prophet? Brothers and sisters, do you know what the truth is? Do you know what the truth is? And then once you know the truth, you better guard it with all of your heart and soul. Because Jesus warns us over and over and over that there's going to come a time of great deception upon the earth. A, a time of deception that's so bad that even if possible, the very elect would be saved. Look what he says. And there shall arise false Christ and false prophets like Billy Graham. And there should be great signs and wonders in so much as if it was possible, even the very elect of God may be deceived. If it's possible, if it's possible for you to let go of the truth, if it's possible for you to love men more than the truth, is it possible for you to love men or the world more than the truth? Because if it's possible, then you shall be deceived right along with the world. Right along with the world. There's only, the promise of protection is only for the saints of God. The promise of protection is for the obedient to the truth, for those who love the truth. Look what he says in Revelation chapter 3, because you keep my words. Because you keep my words, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. Isn't it a great dis temptation that's coming upon the world to believe in this new teaching that God loves everybody and that everybody's going to be saved and you don't have to really change your ways? Isn't that a nice, seductive teaching? Isn't that a wonderful, pleasant thing to hear? And it's almost like I want to believe that. I want that because it makes my soul at ease with sin. It, it makes my soul at ease with the way I've been living. It makes me comfortable in my lukewarm ways. I like those teachings because it takes the pressure off of me. Oh, don't pressure me. Don't pressure me. I, I don't want to be pressured. Oh, no. Jesus didn't pressure anybody. Jesus didn't preach the fires of hell and to repent from your sins and to cut your hand off if it keeps sinning. Jesus didn't warn you that you're going to perish. No. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Brothers and sisters, we have to keep this truth and we have to hold this truth and we are going to be protected from that time that comes upon the earth. There's an hour of temptation coming upon the earth. What, what, what hour is that? Right here. Right here, Jesus says, there shall arise false prophets. There's coming a deception upon the earth. He goes, it's coming. What, what? This time, this hour of temptation that's coming upon the whole world. To test them, look, to try them that dwell upon the earth. What is it? Why is this hour of temptation coming upon the whole world? To try them. Jesus said, there shall arise, false prophets. There shall arise. These, this is coming a time. There's coming a time. There's coming a time. And Peter and Paul and all of them warned us. Here's Paul. Paul's warning right now that you can be deceived by God himself. God will send a deception to those who don't love his truth. He's saying, he's saying right here that if you keep my words, Revelation 3.10, if you keep my words, I'll keep you. Is that not what he's saying right here? Look what he's saying right here. On the left side, Revelation 3.10, if because you keep my words, I will keep you from the temptation that's coming to test everybody. There's a test coming that's so strong. There's a test coming that's so heavy. The Mandela effect. The Bible's been changed. The UFO stuff. This ecumenical teaching. These easy believism ideas. Hyper grace. You name it. You name it. False sciences that prove we're billions of years old. All this stuff. Evolution's coming. All these deceptions are coming at once. False prophets are raising up. Teaching magnificent things. Miracles, signs, and wonders are mind-boggling and enticing people. There's coming a time. There's coming a time, but if we keep his word, we will be spared from that time of temptation that's coming. There's a time coming. And right here, 
right here on the right side, Jesus warns us there's coming a time so great, so great and powerful that if it was possible, even we would be deceived. We're the only ones that are not going to be deceived. Can I get an amen? Anybody listening? We are the only ones who will not be deceived. And how is that possible? Because there's coming a strong delusion. The delusion's going to be so strong that if you're not grounded in the truth, if you're not founded in, in the rooted in Jesus, look, you will be deceived. God shall send them a strong delusion, it says in verse 11. Who's sending the strong delusion? God sent Billy Graham into the world. God wouldn't send false prophets into the world. Would God send false prophets into the world, Brother Lion, or anybody out there listening? Well, let's look what it says in Deuteronomy 13. What does it say in the Old Testament about God sending false prophets to test the people? Can you give me a seven? Are you listening? Look what it says. G God says, I will send the false prophets to test you. I will send them. I will. The same God that tested Abraham with sacrificing his own son for me, who tested Abraham's faith, I will test your faith too. The same God, the same God that tested Abraham will test you as well. And here we see in Deuteronomy, we're warned right here in Deuteronomy, if there arise among you a prophet, if there comes a dreamer and he gives you a sign or a wonder, look what it says. If there comes a prophet and the sign and the wonder comes to pass, and then he starts saying, let's go after other gods. Isn't that what Billy Graham started saying at the end of his life? First, he's preaching the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus only. And then later in his life, he starts talking about another. God. You don't need to know the name of Jesus. You don't need to know the name of Jesus consciously to go to heaven. He starts preaching another way to get saved. This is exactly what this prophecy is talking about right here. Look again. And if there comes a prophet and he shows you a sign or wonder, and then he starts saying, let's go after other gods, which thou hast not known. We have never known any other name to save us other than Jesus. And Billy Graham's starting to say that you don't need to know the name of Jesus to be saved. Now look what God, look, look at verse three. Look at verse three. Where is this prophet coming from? Where is this prophet coming from? He says, thou shalt, don't take to heart the words of this prophet. Don't listen to him. Look what it says. The Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. God sent the false prophet to test them. Right here, that's the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Over here in the New Testament, we see a confirmation of that. He says, for God shall send them a strong delusion. Can I get an amen? God shall send them a strong delusion. Who's sending the strong delusion? Who's sending these false prophets to test you? God is. God is. Why would anybody be deceived by these men? Why would anybody be deceived by these men? Why? Because they do not love Jesus. They do not know Jesus. You better make sure you have two things if you don't want to be deceived by these men or the signs and the wonders. You better have the truth and you better love the truth with all your heart. Because I believe Billy Graham had the truth at first. I believe many people have the truth at first. I believe many people have tasted God's Holy Spirit at first. But somehow, some way, they let it slip through their fingers. It's not good enough that you know the truth. You have to live by the truth and hold the truth and die in the truth. Look what it says right here in verse 10. 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they did not love the truth that they might be saved. What, what's the reason, Nancy? What's the reason, brothers and sisters? Because they did not love the truth that they could be saved by the truth. God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Why would God send a strong delusion that they should believe a lie? Why? Because they did not love the truth. Right here, black and white. I'm not making it up. This is the word of God. He says, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who did not believe the truth. You don't want to believe the truth? 
You want to you 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 don't want to take to heart the words of Jesus, the teachings of of Jesus. You want to deny him. You want to deny his teachings. Well, then I'll send you something. I'll send you a little present. I'll send you something that you do like. Oh, you don't like the truth, do you? Well, I'll send you something that you do like. That's what God's doing. We reject the truth. We don't listen to the truth. We don't embrace the truth. And, and, and then so God gives us something else. God will give us something else. The only way, the only way to avoid being deceived by people like Billy Graham, by um, the Mandela effect, the, 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 the uh, UFO deception that's coming, the, the signs and wonders of the CERN project, of, of the calling fire down from heaven from these, these medians and miracle workers and healers and things that are coming upon the earth. The only way to not be deceived by the miraculous things that you're about to see. is to know the truth and live by the truth. It says, if it was possible, even the very elect would be deceived. That tells me it's not possible if we are grounded in Christ. If it was possible tells me, depends on how you want to look at this. I look at this as a promise of protection. If it was possible, if it was possible, could say that it's not possible to deceive the elect, those that are truly grounded in Christ. But at the same time, we're told here with a little question mark that if we're not grounded in Christ, yeah, you're going to be deceived. It's very possible. And more than likely, you will be deceived. More than likely, you will be deceived because it's going to be so bad, so bad that only the elect are going to barely escape this deception. It's going to get so bad that you, Peter said, make sure you're one of the elect. Make sure you're one of the elect, because if you do, you won't fall. Isn't that what Peter says, brothers and sisters? Isn't that what Peter says in 2 Peter? He says, make sure your calling and election are sure. And then he says, if you do these things, you'll never fall. You'll never fall into sin. You'll never fall into deception. You won't be deceived. Be why? Because you're doing these things. If you're doing these things, you're the elect. Because only the elect do these things. The other people don't. Lukewarm Christians don't. Counterfeit fake Christians don't do these things. You have to do these things. That's called living by faith. you got to live by faith. Faith. Make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you won't fall. Another promise. Isn't that awesome? I could line these promises up side by side, brothers and sisters. And you better make sure you're in this. Here we got a promise, 2 Peter 1 to 10. Where's the Revelation 3.10 promise? Revelation 3.10, look at this promise. Here's another promise. A protection for those who keep his word. Because you kept my word, I will keep you from the hour of temptation that's coming upon the earth. And then Peter says, make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never fall. You will never fall. That's the same thing. These, these are promises, buddy. God... <coughs> God's not playing around. God's not playing around. He's going to test us. Why does God test men? Why does God test Abraham? Why is God testing these, uh, testing his people with false prophets? Why? I don't know. I, I don't really know. I haven't really heard anybody give me a good reason other than that's just what God does. It's just what he does. What, does he have to do it? I don't know that either. I don't know. All I know is that it happens. All I know is that it happens. I don't need to know all the details to know that something works. I don't know how the phone works, really. I don't know. But I pick it up and I send a text message anyway. So, brothers and sisters, we don't need to know all these things. We just need to know that it's true. It's true. 
It's, it's true, brothers and sisters. What's true? You're going to be tested. And you better make sure you're grounded in the truth. You better make sure you're grounded in the faith. I know. I see it all the time in my chat room. People get tested with things and they fall away. I know that when I had trouble in 2015, three years ago with fornication, I know, I know, I know there's people who lost their faith because of it. Boy, does that hurt every day I think about that. Yeah, I messed up and people believed in me. People believed in me. And, and, and because of my great failure, people decided to fall away from the faith. I know I can name a couple of them. I can name a few of them that, that fell away and hated me and got mad at me because I fell into fornication when I was supposed to be some great, uh, you know, teacher. And that's why I changed my attitude about all that. I, I, ch I just had to realize that I'm nothing and I had to really come down to the dirt of the earth and, and cry out to God to forgive me and people to forgive me. And that's why I really tried to focus on honesty now more than ever because I want to show God that I'm repented. The point I'm trying to make with you is that you shouldn't trust me and you shouldn't trust men like Billy Graham and you shouldn't trust people in general because if you put your hope in people and they decide to go sideways or they have a stumble and fall into something, your faith is going to be shaken, rattled and rolled. And you don't want to follow after someone who's not honest about these things. I've lost many, 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 many subscribers, donate donors, and people that used to support me because of my mistakes that I've made. And, and that, that could be a good thing. It's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because, uh, number one, they are not going to follow after somebody who's, who's uh, acting like a hypocrite. Praise God, they shouldn't. You shouldn't follow after somebody who starts teaching these wacky things like Billy Graham. There's a lot of people that, Billy, that, that, Billy, that got saved by Billy Graham. Do you realize there's a lot of people that got saved through the Billy Graham crusades who tried to warn Billy Graham, Billy Graham, hey, what you're doing is wrong. There's a lot of people that tried to warn Billy Graham along the way, but he refused to listen to the very ones that were converted by him. That's good. They love the truth more than him. The people love the truth more than me. That's great. Now, if Billy Graham repented, then that would be even better, wouldn't it? I repented from my fornications. Hallelujah. I repented from my hypocrisy. Yes, I did. Oh, yes, I did. And it doesn't matter what people say anymore. I know that I've repented. That's what matters. The truth and righteousness and not loving people more than the truth and righteousness. Not loving people more. Not loving me more. Not loving Billy Graham more. Not loving anyone more than the truth. And if you saw Billy Graham or me acting sideways or trying to starting to teach something twisted or acting a little shady, then we need to be rebuked about it. And if we don't repent, excommunicated. I'm not going to have anything to do with them anymore. I'm not going to have anything to do with that teaching or that person until they repent. Brothers and sisters, you're being warned because I know, I know a lot of you and a lot of us have this, this, it's a major challenge. It's a major challenge to make sure we, we know the truth and we love the truth more than anything else. Uh, real quickly, what is the truth? Does anybody know what the truth is out there? Give me a seven if you know what the truth is. If you know what the truth is. If you know what the truth is about who Jesus is and how to be saved through the gospel message. Brothers and sisters, we'll just go over it real quickly so that you know. You have to honor and worship and respect the son of God as if he's God in flesh. The, the offspring, the very nature of God himself. 
If you do not honor him as God's son, and I mean equal with God in a spiritual sense, when you're looking at Jesus, you're looking at the father. He's not the father, but when you look at him, you're seeing the father's expression. Do you understand that? Jesus said, when you see me, you see the father. He's not saying I am the father. He's just saying, hey, I represent the father. I represent the father of heaven. When you see me, you see the father. What does it say right here? Look at this scripture. He's telling Philip, if you've known me, you would already known the father. And what does he say down here in verse nine? Philip, if you see me, you see the father. I'm representing God on earth. I represent God on earth. Jesus was God in a human body. That's the fundamental foundation. You have to believe that. If you don't believe that, you're on a you're on a different a different ground. You're on a different rock. You're on a different foundation, a different planet in a different kingdom and it's not the kingdom of light, it's the kingdom of darkness. You may do everything right in your own eyes and religious people may say that you're doing things right. You may give your body to be burned, you may give your money to the poor, you may build build churches, but if you deny that God is in Christ, that Christ is God in the flesh, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed. Jesus represents and reflects the Father to us. If we do not worship Jesus as God, then we are denying the Father in Christ. The Father does not want you to seek after him. He wants you to seek after his Son. Jesus keeps and hides the Father. Jesus contains the Father inside him. They are one. They are one. Okay, so that's the foundation. The second thing that you have to know, that you have to understand, is the life and teachings of Jesus. He died and rose from the grave, and his blood sacrifice will wash away your sins if... Do you believe that he died and rose from the grave and that his blood can wash you away if? I put the if on the end of that because we're not done with all of it. A lot of times people will leave it there, don't they, brothers and sisters? Don't they? That's the end of the truth. That's it. That's all you need to know. That he died, he rose again, and his blood will cleanse you. That's all you need. No, it's not all you need. That's part of the deception. That's part of the deception. He did die. He did raise from the grave. And his blood can cleanse you from your sins if, if you pick up your cross and follow him. If you pick up your cross and follow him. That means his teachings. What did he say? What did he say? How did he tell us to live? If you're obeying his word, that's following. Did you know that, brothers and sisters, that doing what he says is picking up your cross? Has anybody ever really actually physically picked up a cross to follow Jesus? Have you physically picked up a cross, a real wooden cross to follow Jesus? No. What does he mean by that? He means do what I say. When we do what Jesus says, we're picking up our cross. Can I get an amen out there? Can I get an amen if you understand that? When we pick up our cross, I'm sorry. When we obey Jesus, we are picking up our cross. When we obey the teachings of Jesus, we are picking up our cross. That's that's a metaphorical way of saying, I'm doing what you're telling me. He said, turn from your sins. But I'm not spiritually perfect. Turn anyway. But I keep making mistakes. Turn anyway. But it seems like all I do is fail. Turn anyway. The attitude that I can't stop sinning is not turning. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me very, very carefully. The attitude that I can't stop sinning is an attitude of not turning. 
How do you know you're turning? You believe that you can turn away. How do you know you're turning? You gotta first believe that it's possible. You better get this, brethren. You better get this. You better get this, brethren. If you don't turn from your sins, you will not be saved. If you don't turn from your attitude that I can't stop sinning, you will not be saved. I don't believe you're going to be saved. I don't believe you have the right spirit in you if you don't believe that you can change. I don't believe you have the right spirit of Christ who says, I can do all things through Jesus. That's a man who believes. A man who believes in Jesus knows that through Jesus, we can eventually overcome this sin. Keep believing, Eric. Keep believing. Keep believing because that's the fruit. Where, where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? I, I produce the, the, the diligent effort every day. I plant the, the seeds of faith Every day, I struggle to overcome my sin. I'm willing to cut my right hand off. I'm striving every day to do what he says. That's fruit. That's effort. That's work. Jesus sees that. Jesus sees that. He sees your faith. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. He sees you're turning from your sins. You're turning from your wicked ways. That's the beginning. And you believe that. And you never give up. That proves that you're listening to Jesus, doesn't it? That proves that you're listening to Jesus, doesn't it, brothers and sisters? That's, that's some evidence. That's some evidence that I'm listening to Jesus. I'm going to keep turning. I'm going to keep fighting this. I'm going to keep putting it down. I'm never going to give up. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep crying out to him. I'm going to keep fasting. I'm never going to give up. I'm going to keep getting prayer. I'm going to keep getting hands laid on me. I'm going to keep confessing my sins. I'm never going to give up. Never going to give up. Never going to give up. Okay, so we're founded on the teachings of Jesus. Jesus says you can have the blood covering if you pick up your cross and follow me. Getting water baptized is a fundamental tradition. Yes, it's important. Yes, every Christian needs to do it. But if you're dying on a cross and you can't do it, you know, you're going to be saved. Baptism is, is following. Now we're following him with obedience. So we're following him with the first sign of our Christianity, and that's getting water baptized. Very important but it doesn't save you. Breaking bread with the saints, living obedient is more evidence and a lifestyle, a traditions of Christianity that's very important. Very important stuff that we, that, that we need to do. There's traditions that follow. There's, there's behavior. There's fellowship. There's growth. We have to continue in his goodness. We have to continue or we won't make it. And just because you're there today doesn't mean you're going to continue in it tomorrow, does it, brothers and sisters? And that's the final clincher of this truth package, gospel message, that you must understand. Is that if you turn from your sins and believe in the name of Jesus and continue, can you type continue in for me, someone? You have to continue in him. And many of us have fallen. Many of us have fallen. But have we gotten back up? Have we repented? Have we gotten back on the horse? Have we gotten back on that cross? Have we picked it back up? Have we started get back, get back on the narrow path? Got back on the narrow path? Did, did we repent? Did you turn around again? Did you turn again? Brothers and sisters, I don't care how many times we fail. We've got to turn one more time than we fail, don't we? Do you understand that, brothers and sisters? If you fail 99 times, the important thing is that you repent 100 times. If you fall seven times, the important thing is that you get up eight times, isn't it, brothers and sisters? You got to get up one more time than you fall down, don't you, brothers and sisters? You can't get caught while you're down. That's the important thing of striving every day. That's the important thing of picking up your cross and continuing in him because we're going to have bad days and troubles and fall sometimes. Oh, brothers and sisters, hallelujah. We have to know the truth and we have to live by the truth and we have to continue in the truth until the day we die. If we love the truth, if we know the truth, Jesus' precious name, and he's God in flesh, 
And he said, turn away from my wicked ways and do good. And that's called believing in him. And continue in that until we die. Continue in holiness, be changed and transformed from our old ways and walk in a new spirit and hold on to that until the day we die. Following his instructions until the day we die. You have the truth. If you have the love of God above all the love of the world and all the love of people, then you have what you need to not be deceived by the great and strong delusion that's coming upon the world and by signs and wonders and great prophets that are rising up. You will not be sidetracked or captivated or snared by the hour of temptation that's coming upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You will be spared. You will not be deceived. It will not be possible to deceive you. It only comes possible to deceive you if you compromise in any way the truth and your love for the truth. Let's pray together, brothers and sisters. You guys want to pray with me? Lord God, I know I've fallen away so many times into snares and trouble and entangled into sin. And I, I just I just hope and pray, Lord God, that you let us get back up and you let us get back on that narrow path and you put away our sins. You give us a sober mind, love, power, and a sound mind, a clear thinking mind truthful understanding and wisdom and revelation and that we will be firmly founded on your truth now and we won't fall back anymore we won't fall away anymore lord god you've seen your 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 grace working in some of us that we are striving and praying daily that we're counted worthy and we're praying that our sins are put away and we're praying for the grace and mercy of, of your gift to be saved. We're praying for the heavenly reward. We're praying that we're not deceived. We're praying that we love the truth and we abide in the truth now. We've messed up a lot in our past. But now, Lord God, we, we are living obedient to you with every thought and every motive and deed in our hearts to be pure before you, Lord God. I pray for the souls out there that are still playing lukewarm games, who are still dilly-dallying around with their sins, who haven't made a sharp commitment to cut it off. I pray, Lord God, is there any way that you could chastise that sin right out of them before it's too late, Lord? I pray, Lord God, that they're not deceived by things, by sin, by deception, by teachings and doctrines, by signs and wonders, because they're flirting around with their sin, they're susceptible. It is possible to deceive such a one. Lord God, I pray, Lord, that they snap out of it and repent and so that they're not deceived. Thank you for this ministry and your work and your grace and your mercy and your blood and your gospel message and your teachings, Lord. Thank you so much for your patience and compassion to give us to repent, Lord. Thank you for your truth and your word. In the name of your son, be glorified in this ministry. Thank you, Lord. In the name of your son, amen. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, the Bible study is over a little early today, but that's okay. How many of you have added a little bit too much spices to the soup and then you ruined it? <laughs> Has anybody ever done that? Let me get over here to the big camera. How many of you were cooking something really good and you just kept adding a little more ginger, a little more curry, and it's almost perfect. And then you cross the line and you add a little bit too much. And next thing you know, it's too hot or it's too this or it's too that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... We don't want to do that with today's message. That was good. That's all you needed to hear today. Go back and watch it again if you need to. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Less is best. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. So anyway, yes, I, we're just going to, we're going to switch over to uh, music mode here in a minute. I just want to see who's all out there with me. The light. Yeah, say, yeah, that's right, Sister Erica. 
Well, if you can't come to these Bible studies every, every day, it's uh, Saturday at 12 o'clock Eastern time. You can always watch the videos after they're re-uploaded, they're re so don't worry if you can't make it live. Go to the website on your screen and read the information. You won't miss the times. All the information's at that website right there. Wearethelastgeneration.com. All the times are tomorrow. We have a, another live chat, 5 o'clock instead of 12. It's 5 o'clock on Sunday, 12 o'clock on Saturday. You can fellowship live with us. But if you miss it, you'll, you'll, you can watch the video, the uploaded video. Praise be to the Lord. Praise be to God. Lisa's here. Who else snuck in on me? Wendy, Kimmy, Eric, Nancy. I guess I said hi to everybody else. Joshua, Tina, Balin. I think I said Heather's here. Welcome. I don't know if I said hi. The Greek name. <laughs> uh, Christy snuck in. What's up, Christy? James, Michael. I don't know if Christy's still here. James. Marlon's in the house. I don't know if he's still in the house. Said hi to the admins. Brother Lion snuck in. I don't know if he's still here or not. We're getting ready to switch to uh, music mode, so a lot of people are going to take off. So that's okay. That's okay. Sister Erica's here. Sister Christy's here. Okay. What's up, Heather? Got good to see you guys. Yo. <laughs> in the house. Shelly's in the house. Elizabeth's in the house. You know what I want? Pete? I want you guys to do someday. Not, I'm not talking to anybody in particular. The sheep man's back. I had to do that today. A sister, a sister emailed me. I'm sorry, text me, and it just rubbed me the wrong way. And and I basically, I think I got a little snooty about it. And the very next day, I realized, you know what? That was rude. I'm gonna I'm gonna text them back, say I'm sorry. Is there anybody in your life that you may have had a conflict with that you can easily contact and say I love you? I'm sorry that we had that conflict. I challenge you guys to examine your lives out there and go back and, and say, you know what, whether I was right or wrong, I'm going to make a turn the other cheek effort here. And I'm just going to show some love. I'm just going to show this person some love. And if I get rejected, so be it. So be it. I don't need a thank you. I don't need a pat on the back. I don't even need a response. I'm just going to reach out to that person and say, I love you. And so, brothers and sisters, a lot of times you don't even have to really be guilty of anything to do that. You, you may be right about the, the, the conflict. You may be more than likely every, both, side, both sides are wrong in some degree. How many of you know you can be wrong? <clears throat> How many of you know you can be right but then be wrong with your attitude? <laughs> Me and Brother Lion are still learning that one. How many of you know that you can be right about a point of view? But because of the way you delivered it and the way you communicated, all of a sudden your righteousness has become unrighteousness. How many of you have ever done that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So go to somebody and say, I'm sorry. And I love you. And I'm, and, and I'm working on those things. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen, brothers and sisters. I guess you could, my middle name is, sorry about that. <laughs> That's my middle name. Wayne Levi Price. No, Wayne, sorry about that, Price. That's my middle name. Sorry about that. <laughs> but you got to mean it, man. You got to mean it. You know, you, you can't be religious about it. <laughs> And thank you guys out there for your prayers, your support, your donations. We're going to switch to uh, music mode in just a few minutes. If you've given to this ministry, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it more than you realize. I don't really want to switch over too early. It looks like we're going to switch over early. I hate to do that, but <clears throat> just um, people are going to be getting in wondering why the music's going a little early today, but um, that's okay. Balance in the house. Welcome. Tina, I never heard back from you. I'm still waiting to hear back from you. I'm not going to say anything publicly here. What's going on? But uh, 
my last text message to you, I never heard back. Go back and read that. Praying for you, sister. Praying for you. Get your music shades on. <laughs> oh. All right, we're about to switch over then. I'm going to run to the bathroom and get some more coffee. <clears throat> and we will be ready to go. here let's pull up the old program and see what's going on here all right brothers and sisters we're just going to goof around with some music <clears throat> and uh song that i've been working on here here's the sounds we're going to be using today god bless you guys Gotta have my apocalypse drop in there. A little pad, synthesizer.
sounds that we're going to be using today, just some of the sounds we're going to be using in this song. Last sound is Big Ben. So we got a bunch of percussions and some um, synthesizer pads and some beats, some drums, some bass sounds, and, and we got some voice sounds I didn't play yet. Well, we're going to get into it right now. Let's go ahead and just move over to the middle screen here. All right, here we go. What's first? What are we gonna do first? Um, There's gonna be some vocals in this one. A lot of synthesizer sounding voice, since I can't sing very good. The Saved by Grace. Saved by Grace. Day by grace, 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 day by grace,
don't know, but I like it when it comes in with the drums, though. Let's put these things on here. I like it when it kicks in with the drums.
That's just all there is to it. I don't, I don't have any much more to go on this thing. Just goofing around, playing around. I know the keys are off. A lot of it's off. I definitely, definitely know that it's not professional. Just something to have fun with, brothers and sisters, and to serve the... Keep me out of trouble and serve the Lord. That's, you know what? I don't care about being famous anymore. I don't care about being rich. I just want to make it to heaven. I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's all that matters to me anymore in my life. So praise the Lord for that. You could try to pull up a different song. You guys want me to pull up a different song? That's just one song. I, it's okay. I thank God for it, brother. I'm not trying to boast about it. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. The Lord's blessed me with like 140 songs. <laughs> God, I don't know how I did it. I was making like one song a day. Like that that song probably took, by the grace of God, like 10, 18 hours. I don't know. It's not even that good. I'm just saying. I really was getting into music for a while there. But I think I got enough songs for the videos now. <laughs> Some of them I don't like now, though, Shelly. <laughs> I just don't like them anymore. Get behind me, saint, and I don't even know if I have those words anymore.
You you rap, brother? That's good. <laughs> All right, Tina, God bless you. Yeah, I'm not going to get hit with copyright. That's right, sister. Get behind me, Satan. did this one. We did this one already. I remember that. I remember that doing this one already. Let's put that over here. <laughs> I remember Christy liking that one part in that one. That's why I know we did this one already. Let's see if we can do something with this one.
I'm trying to figure out where that's coming from. Why isn't that playing? Man, that's so low. Okay, I don't like this anymore. I used to like that sound, but I don't like that sound anymore. So we're going to have to switch that out. Man, not that that's I don't like that sound anymore. So I'm not gonna make you sit to that. I gotta figure out what to trade this out with though. Let's see. I wanna change that. Save. Let's find a new sound for that. Choice. LD Choice. Let's rename that. Let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> oh, I don't think that worked. Sounds good. <laughs> I think I've played this one in here with you guys before. I still want to change this, man. Something's got to be done about this. Maybe that's it. It's too high or something.
just get rid of it altogether. I don't like, I don't know if I like it or not. I like it. I like this part. Let's get out of here. Start from scratch. Start from scratch. <clears throat> sure, why not? We got no songs, no music, nothing in here. Let's try to just start from scratch. Start from scratch. I really like these sounds right here. Start from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you have to wear, Shelly? <laughs> We're trying to give green bean baby food. Oh, <laughs> don't make kids eat something that they're going to throw. My parents used to make me eat stuff and I literally gagged. I gagged with uh, cooked celery was the most disgusting thing you could ever put in my mouth. I like crunchy raw celery, but when you cook it and it's soft, it makes me want to throw up. Parents would make you eat it. That's like, oh my gosh, why? That's that's child abuse, man. That's child abuse. This is called Exhale. Exhale is by Output. Output's a great company. They make Exhale. Exhale is just one music source. One music source. Now, in this music source, there are hundreds of different sounds just from this Exhale by Output. So let's go through some of them. <laughs> trumpet sound calling people to repent Jesus is about to come you better get ready nations are put on alert calling all nations get ready the kingdom of God is about to come I like that sound we're gonna use that sound today Get ready, Jesus is coming. That's an awesome sound, man. All right, we're going to put some beat on there with it to kind of jack it up real good. I got to find a really good kick. An 808 would be great. An 808 would be great. Do I have any really good 808 beat sounding kickers? Let's see. 
purchases. Thank you for these sounds, O oh Lord God Almighty. Output has some good ones. Savage drums. Oracle. 808, please. Uh -uh. I want something like really, really super duper boom. Okay. 808. Where are we at? Here we go. That's almost got it. All right, I need to figure out where that's going to go. Kicks. not the right sound. Sometimes it takes a long time to find the right sound. That's why I have these songs already done before we get in here. It can take a while to find the right sound. I tell you what. Um, I don't like those. Boom. Maybe it's just too loud. I don't know. Maybe it's just too loud. I don't think that's going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. I don't like that. Huh. I like the sound of the trumpet too, but I, I got to figure out what kind of beat to go with it. That's going to take a minute. Maybe next week I'll have, I'll, I'll, it'll take me a week to find the beat maybe. Give up bacon. <laughs> you know what? Don't love it too much then. Don't love it too much. <laughs> he may... He tends to ask me to give up the things I love too much. When I start putting too much emphasis on something and making something too important in my life, that's the very thing he, he's going to ask me to get rid of. So I got to make sure that I'm balanced. I, I got to make sure that I don't, that nothing overtakes me with desire. Does that make sense out there? <laughs> in other words, if you like it, don't like it too much because, uh, <laughs> Once it starts to get a hold of you, then it's going to become a problem. So, <laughs> that's not even in the right tone. No wonder it doesn't sound good. Man, I'm trying to find use a lot. Where? Yeah, here you go. 
That might work. I always go back to the same kick. I don't know why. That's still not the right one, but... be better that's that's actually not too bad I don't even have my tempo picked out. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. right one either. I gotta get that on the right one, man. Trying to find the right one.
Go up a scratch. Coming for scratch. We don't know what we're doing. We're just doing it. How about delete? How do you delete that? Cut on it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what in the world? Come on, buddy. Give me something. Yeah, I know it don't sound that good, but... Turn that off for a second. I know that's going to get annoying. All right, got it, got it, got it. Not even need this in the beginning just uh that would probably come in like later anyway what's up crazy days <sighs> primal call that's what that's called primal call I'm looking for something else to go inside this. What else can we poke around with? Oh, something's leading me to harmless. I don't know why. Not that one. Woo, no way. Oh man, don't you got something good in there, man? Come on, man. Okay, let's see what we got with that. Turn it down so loud. I gotta get my timing right, that don't sound good, but... Oh, that don't sound good. 
With a beats beating, beating with it, something's wrong. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. That's off. Something's wrong with that. Haha, <laughs> better. Better get ready. Your, ju your soul's about to be judged, brothers and sisters. This is a warning. Get ready. Judgment is coming. Get ready. Judgment is coming. Can't run and hide. Can't take a dive. No, no. Just don't run. All right, so uh, let's see if we can make this unique, make this a little longer. <laughs> We're picking up the pace a little bit here. We got it. Um, let's move this down another one and add some more stuff. Who wants to add some more stuff? Let's I just keep adding stuff to it and see what we can come up with. Keep adding. <laughs> let's keep adding until, you know, there's no more room left to add. I need some more kicks in it eventually. I got to have some more beat. Got 
sounds better. Open in a new channel. Gotta add some more. I'm off beat, but that's okay. Let's add some more kicks in here. Insert one. Um, kicks, more kicks and kickity kicks. Let's add more kicks. Cause I like a good beat to my sound. So you know what I'm saying? Whoa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gonna have to add a little bit more. It could go like that or it could go like this. It could be there or it could be there. Which sounds better? Ah, uh, sounds better the other way, huh? That can be the second round. We can have two different ways we're going to do it. One can have a second beat and one cannot have a second beat. Make it unique. Make it unique. Okay. <laughs> Um, FL Studio 12.5. I don't know if it's their latest version or not. <coughs> Fruity Loops is the software. On beat there. That hi hat sounds a bit hard, too hard, too clunky or something. Let's take out the horn on the second part. But I need some, I need some, I know what I need. I know what I need. I need some, 
I need some. What's this one sound like? I need some pads in here. Okay. This is our new song. Uh, it's going to be a, called a practice song. Or no, the Lord is coming. Get ready. He is coming. I like this one. He's coming. I, I got a lot of song, things called he's coming. I guess I'm trying to warn you that he's coming. In a, get ready. I don't know how many things I got titled get ready or he's coming or <laughs> I can't think of anything original, I guess. Anyway. Yeah, let's make it high pitched. E-F, 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 E-F. Copy. Gotta have to write the same. You gotta have the same. Uh, what's this one called? It's called, it's called, it's called Nexus. No, that's not it. hi-hat's not sounding good it sounds like you're clanking on a kitchen sink I, I gotta have it sound better than that man okay okay not that there's anything wrong with clinking on a sink it's just use a lot hi-hats That's better. Now 
I don't know about that. Let's see what we got here. Just came out of the blue like that. I want some tacos. Hey, Christina, welcome. You're making me hungry. Two miles. <laughs> Woo, somebody bring food next time. that little metal sound let's put that in there we'll have to add that somewhere little metal sound it's called metal percussion just a little bit metal percussion let's put it in there I don't know where it's going uh, insert insert A little metal percussion. Where can I put this? Where can I put this sound at? there <laughs> let's try every four and see what happens I don't want it to, no 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 it's just gonna be an accent Is it on what you call it? It is. Okay, I got you. Let's turn that off. That that keeps getting me. Okay, okay. Okay, we're not going to finish this today, but it's um, 
Maybe we can finish this next week. Save. I'm gonna. I got this saved on my desktop, don't I? Let's see here. Yep, got it saved on my desktop. I'm gonna close this down for now. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe it'll get better next week. It's two o'clock, so. I love you guys. The Sheep Man, Shelly, Miles, St. Boost, Christina, Christy, Balint. Just calling the last few comments that are out there. See who's still there. Shelly's in the house still. I don't know who else is still here. Miles and others. Roy, if you guys are getting here a little late, go back and watch the beginning of this video. Make sure you do the Bible study with us. Look up the scriptures. And I will catch you guys very, very soon on the next video. Thanks for your prayers, your support, your donations. Nikita, what's up, brother? What's up, my friend? Good to see you around. Good to see your name. I know who you are. I remember you on Facebook and texting and stuff. I hope you're doing okay, brother. Don't give up, my friend. Don't give up. I love you guys. I'm going to close out this live streaming, and we'll be back tomorrow. Live streaming tomorrow again, if you don't know. Every weekend, Saturday, Sunday, we're live streaming. Tomorrow we live stream again. Come to our chat room 5 o'clock. Come back at 5 o'clock tomorrow. And we'll do it again. This time bring some tacos. Bring some bacon. Yes, we all need the Lord. We all need the Lord, Nikita. We all need the Lord. All right. So let's make sure our faith and we're faithful to God. All right, sheep man. Be around tomorrow. All right. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Take care. Peace.